Hello, everybody. Welcome here to the convention. Uh, we would like to present our program, Mosaic. Um, just, we will come to that. But my name is Christoph. His name is Fabian. Um, we will start with where we come from. We come from the heart of Europe, as we heard yesterday many times, Germany. Where exactly? We come from a very small town, which is called Schwäbisch Gmünd. It is exactly here. And it's beautiful. <laughs> And we met together studying communication design at our University of Design. And we met and we distinguished one problem during all our studies. Um, and Fabian will introduce what the problem was. So this was um, our starting point. <clears throat> if you look at this, and if, especially if you're not, uh, if you are not, if you don't know about like programming and stuff, uh, this looks like cryptic, and you get scared of it. And um, a lot of our colleagues, and actually we self, got scared of it. And um, this was our starting point to um, to to find something, find a solution to get uh, easier access. And if you look at uh, today, the society, everything is connected. We have the Internet of Things, like everything is built with, uh, with HTML, CSS, and com more complex code. And um, we see like all these surfaces, but we don't know how they are built and how they are work. <clears throat> and we wanted to make, um, make a tool that, it, that, gets, that you get access easier to the information and how to, that you understand how this works. So. Now we want to uh, explain a little bit our process. What we first did, we, what, we were researching like existing tools. Maybe some of you know uh, self-HTML. <laughs> it's uh, and if you look at it, it's it's not very pleasuring. It's like uh, you are not getting motivated to learn. And um, there are a lot of uh, additional software examples that uh, actually just the same, <laughs> even more. <laughs> and um, what we did after researching these uh, the existing software, we were asking students, um, how do you learn best? Um, what motivates you with learning? And um, we collected all these answers and afterwards we <clears throat> we asked experts like professors and uh, lecturers and people from uh, from the industry what they want people to know after their graduation and uh, what they experienced what helps people to learn in a good way <clears throat> Um, yeah, and our most important findings um, were that uh, learning works best if it's uh, in a playful way and if it's like uh, with a visual approach. That was the first thing, and the second thing was that if you combine face-to-face -face, um, learning situations with uh, online uh, av available resources. <clears throat> so these two points. Um, yeah, and now Chris is continuing. Yeah, besides all the information of what we have to um, educate the people, we needed to, how are they learning? So about the learning um, behavior, about the learning structure. So we went face to face with our users and tried in a small user test how they are learning and how they are processing information. We then built uh, functional prototypes, interactive prototypes. We built many of them many different problems we tried to solve as an interactive, um, on an interactive approach. And we went back to our target group many times. So we did this process a lot, many months. And we tried to iterate um, what we do, if, it, uh, if, if, if what we do is right and if we are on the right path, so to say. Um, we created a, a platform, a web platform. We will show you a video now to understand how it works, how it looks, and how you can use it in your um, daily life, learning by yourself, or in the education um, part, where, for example, professors or teachers teach HTML.
So you can see we have a very interactive, playful, and um, exciting way to teach code, HTML and CSS, you can experiment in a live editor. So everything you type, everything you do, you can see if it worked or if it doesn't, didn't work. So you have your um, error, your errors eliminated. Um, our tool is working in beta right now. That means it's not done yet, but hopefully soon. Um, our professors at our university are already teaching with it, trying to solve very complex issues, trying to explain code. I myself teach, and Fabian and our other colleague Andreas um, are already using it in real life work. So if there is a problem which they face, they come back to our tool and find their solution there. Yeah, so our goal is um, that Mosaic uh, gets spread it and um, that more and more universities and uh, private persons um, use it. And uh, now we, we want to welcome you to, to visit Mosaic and check it out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christoph and Fabian. This is uh, very, very helpful and interesting. Obviously, the studies which you did on learning uh, and the iteration which you did uh, brought you into a blended learning approach. Okay. What is the most critical thing in terms of visual design which you think uh, is critical for helping learning from the studies which you have done? I think it plays a key role in visualizing something you have to learn instead of just writing a text, preparing visually in information graphics, for example, in short videos, in interaction examples, is key to learning. Yeah, I just want to add that uh, like the interact interactive part, like that you interact with the content and that you learn by doing, and that you combine, that was very important in our project, that you combine like the input, like the code, with the visual output. If you see like input and output at the same time, the learning process is quite f like faster. That was maybe the most Im important thing. You are from which city again? <laughs> it's called Schwäbisch Gmünd. Schwäbisch. It's near Stuttgart. Yeah. So Schwäbisch Gmünd, and that is how far is it from there to Tampere? To where? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's ask a teacher from Tampere. Would you adopt this? Uh, probably. It's very diplomatic. Uh, how far is it from Tampere to Schwäbisch Gmünd? Uh, I've been to Stuttgart. I, I can't remember. Okay. So, but it's maybe only three clicks, and you get onto Mosaic. Any questions from the jury to the people? Yes, Steffi here and then Christian. Uh, how are you planning to spread this tool? She's asking because she's also working at a university, but it's in Aarhus in Denmark. Onset. Okay, sorry, onset. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, such events like this help a lot. We're trying to spread the word via presenting, um, via showing our beta wherever it's possible, presenting it on design blogs and other blogs for education online, and just trying to spread it like that. Yeah. Okay. Just and most, most of the time we hope that universities use it, so they can spread the word via their students and they spread it out as well, like a snowball effect. Uh, I have two questions. One is, uh, maybe can you tell us again what is innovative about the product? Uh, and the second question is, why did you name it Mosaic, given that there was a very famous uh, brand with the same name, which is now being reactivated, as I have heard? So, yeah, two questions. Well, thank you for that. About the name, Mosaic means bringing small pieces together to one big piece. So this uh, refers to the knowledge you gain by learning part for part and gaining a big knowledge of everything regarding HTML and CSS. So the mosaic um, builds you a bigger picture of what you learn. And the second question, sorry. What is innovative? What's innovative? So innovative, uh, as I as I said, like uh, 
first thing that you combine like visual input, like the text textual input and the visual output. It's like one thing and that you have like in addition you have like um, if we, as we've seen in the video, you have like little like uh, interactive uh, le lectures that where you can just uh, like understand complex things by just one click. It's just like clicking and then you understand like how things are connected to each other. And uh, this is something we didn't found in the research in any like software teaching thing. Okay, I have a question for Michael Kopp, who is uh, running the learning center here at the Technical University. What do you think about this? Uh, well, uh, sounds very interesting, but uh, I have a question about uh, interaction. You, you're mentioning a lot. And I didn't get a point who is interacting with whom or with what. Okay. So it's about persons or it's about uh, things? It's about both. Okay. So what we found in the research that what works best if, if you have like face-to-face -face, uh, situations like a professor and a, and a student actually and if you combine this with like a everywhere online available resource with, with, with like lesson, less lessons and interactive things where you can play with and if you have like the combination of these two then um, you have like the best learning effect. Okay, I take two more questions. I just have a question concerning um, JavaScript, AngularJS. Are you planning to integrate other programming languages as well? Because HTML is just like one aspect right. of the whole web um, right. code that's needed. So we, uh, at, the, at the starting point, we focused on HTML and CSS because it's like the the um, less the not the most like not complex, right? <clears throat> so we we thought it's a good starting point to get into this. Th this thing, um, but it's like the the concept could work with like everything, like C plus plus or anything. You could like how to get down complex, like like uh, to get down the complex uh, things, right? Yeah. So could be Jörg. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you had to heard this question before, but there are now some platforms like Udacity and so on who also support to execute code and have these lecture videos. What exactly do you do to really bring that into the classroom and how to do, do that? Uh, we found out that just reading a text and then programming on your own or watching a video and then programming on your own is very difficult since you forget maybe the beginning of the video when you reach the end. So. We, we wished we could have just stopped the video at any point and then program, but you still need another, another tool. You, so you have to switch between applications all the time. And we tried to embed it, that to just one screen so you don't have to switch front and back any, any time. And you have very simple instructions so you can learn step for step in very small steps um, without switching, without um, forgetting what you, what you read. Okay, anybody else wanting to have an urgent question? There's somebody who has not asked a question yet, so I'll ask him. Uh, say your name, please. Hello, my name is Thomas. I'm coming from the Campus 02. And uh, my question is related uh, for, for which circumstances is this product used? For example, is it more uh, located in the classroom with uh, supervision by a lector, or is it more a self-educated program? So we would say it's like it's more um, located in the classroom, like 60% and 40% like on your own. Yeah. It, it basically works on every device as well. So you can use it on a train, on an iPad or on a Surface tablet, <laughs> or you can use it at your, in, at your home or with other students in the classroom, wherever you want, basically. Okay. You still want to ask a question, Olga? And, yeah. uh, but very quickly and shortly. Yes, building on the other question, I think that wasn't very clear. Um, your space of HTML, CSS is very congested, and at the same time, it's a very, very simple thing to teach yourself. Um, you said that you want to expand to other programming languages. So can you teach, uh, let's say, object-oriented programming languages using your approach? Is it, is it, do you think, is, is it possible? Because there, you have a bigger space. Yeah, I think um, I think it's possible, but it's way more complex. And actually, we didn't like put we concentrated on HTML and CSS and not on this. So I think yes, <laughs> but uh, it's a great it's um, it would be hard to to do. Let's say it like this. 
we, we found learning solutions for, for HTML and CSS. So we, we built exercises, especially for this case. So what we, have to, what we would have to do if we would expand, that we would, would have to, to change the exercises to a more simple level in a different way for, for another language. Okay, thank you very much. This is great. Fabian and Christoph with the project Mosaic Learning HTML and CSS Interactively. Thank you and applause. Thank you.